Well, firstly today, the United Kingdom has announced an 80% hike in electricity and gas bills, worsening the current cost of living crisis. Britain's energy regulator Ofgem announced it will increase its energy price cap in October to an average of nearly $4,200 per year, which is nearly double the current price cap of $2,323. The regulator blamed the soaring wholesale gas costs after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So the the price cap is a is a, a cap on the price that energy suppliers can pay for units can charge for units of energy. It's not a cap on a bill. It's a cap on the unit of energy. We've just heard that it's increased by another eighty percent, another seven hundred and fifty pounds. That's about two thousand pounds on a bill since in a twenty in a twelve month period. Uh, what it means is that an average UK energy bill is going to be around three thousand five hundred pounds. When a year ago it was about one thousand two hundred pounds, it is simply unaffordable for millions of people in Britain, and it's already caused huge amounts of privation, debt, anxiety, and grief. And it will only get worse as we head into the winter. Household and business consumers, energy suppliers and opposition politicians are calling for urgent government action. They demand the government do more to avoid putting the most vulnerable in desperate situations. This is as the Tories elect their next leader to replace Boris Johnson as prime minister. And with UK inflation already in double digits and forecasts to strike 13% in the coming months, the near doubling in the cap will likely throw millions into fuel poverty, forced to choose between heating or eating. And if that wasn't worrisome enough, the nation is predicted to enter recession later this year. Well, joining me for more now in London is Laura making Isherwood. Laura, thanks so much for joining us. Some experts are calling uh, this rise a catastrophe. Just give us a sense of how this will work, why it's been imposed and what people can now do. Well, as you've explained, it's effectively a cap on the amount that people are going to be charged for the units of energy that they are supplied with in their homes. Also, a cap on the limits that suppliers can charge for simply having those households hooked up to the national grid and making sure that they have uh, those supplies of gas, gas and electricity. Now, every three months, we're now going to see a revision of these price caps. So it's likely that this could increase even further. The suppliers, of course, saying that they need to raise these prices because of the increased cost of energy coming from around the world since uh, the West decided to move away from Russian supplies. Now people are racing, of course, to try to plug the gap left by those supplies and households are having to take the brunt of those increased costs that suppliers are having to pay. So it's a bit of a knock on effect moving down the chain and it could push a lot of households into what's known as fuel poverty when people are forced to spend more than 10 percent of their income on uh, those electricity and gas supplies. Now, as you said, campaigners have called this catastrophic, saying that millions of people will simply not be able to pay this, not be able to, to basically afford the bills that land on their doormats. Now, what can people do? There's a campaign at the moment where many people are saying that they're simply going to cancel their direct debits and refuse to pay their bills once that price cap comes into play in Oct on October the 1st. However, uh, consumer rights groups are advising people not to do that, saying instead they need to talk to their suppliers, explain their situation and try to sort out some sort of repayment scheme, an agreement between both the customer and the supplier. There are also some grants that suppliers are offering, so it's well worth people checking uh, with their supplier if there are those grants available for them to use. And the government, of course, is looking to this £37 billion pot of money that they're putting aside to help support families. They're going to offer £400 per year to households to help go towards those energy costs. Other payments will be uh, offered to those on the lowest incomes as well as those that are disabled as well. But campaigners are saying this simply isn't going to be enough to help support people as they face these astronomical bills and ones that could get even higher next year. And Laura, just finally, this situation goes really hand in hand with inflation. How is this uh, energy price cap really going to have an impact on inflation in the UK? 
Well, there are concerns that it's going to exacerbate this problem. The Bank of England is predicting that inflation could hit around 13 percent because of this increase in that price cap. It's effectively meaning that people have less in their pockets to spend on things like going out, buying other items. And so consequently, there will be an issue there in terms of the amount of money circulating within the economy, the amount that people have to spend on disposable items. There are uh, reports as well, predictions from other financial groups that that inflation rate could surpass 13 percent, hitting 18 percent next year when the next price cap uh, rise is inevitably announced. And that will obviously increase the cost of living for people. It's going to make this problem even worse. Now, the risk then is that businesses as well will have to foot extra bills for the amount of these uh, energy prices that are increasing. That then could be passed on to those customers within those properties as well. The situation just seems to be exacerbated by one thing and then another. And the risk now is that we are heading towards a recession and this could cause even more of a problem as for the economy and for people as we move through into next year. Yeah, lots of economic concern for the UK, that's for sure. Uh, thanks, Laura. That was uh, Laura making issue in London for us. Now, for more, we're being joined by Hilary Ingham from London. Uh, she's an economist at Lancaster University. Uh, Hilary, thanks so much for joining us. Firstly, how serious of a situation is this economically with the price, uh, the, the, the price cap rising and also, as we say, inflation rising as well? Well, it's an incredible problem. I mean, you know, that the prices are over three and a half thousand pounds. That's for your typical household. And I mean, it has been reported that for a lot of people, this is now going to exceed their mortgage payments. And as your last commentator said, it's not just households, there's businesses as well. Um, and there's a report today that one hotel in the UK has actually said they're going to close in the winter simply because they won't be able to afford to heat the rooms. And of course, the other thing we have to take into account is that we are coming up to winter. And so we've got great uncertainty. Um, and if we have a mild winter, that will, to an extent, help the problem. But if we have a severe winter, then that is going to make this far worse. So for many, many households, and it is now not just those on lower incomes, it is across the board. People are worried about how they are actually going to pay these bills. And of course, you know, we're in an inflationary situation. This is going to fuel it. You know, the 13 percent is recognised by the Bank of England. But again, as your last commentator said, this could be like 18 percent. So we're very much in a sort of inflationary time and facing a recession. So economically, you know, we are in quite a bad place. Yeah, and a lot of people are extremely worried, as you say, about inflation reaching that 18 percent percent figure. Uh, now, the war in Ukraine it still doesn't really have an end in sight. And a lot of economies have been impacted badly because of that duration of that war. The longer this goes on, how much of an impact does this have on economies uh, across the world and especially here in the UK? It's having a big impact because, of course, we know that Russia is actually now cutting off supplies from Nord Stream 1. But of course, we were expecting there to be additional supplies from Nord Stream 2, which is now completely off the agenda. And although we know Germany is very dependent on um, Russian supplies, the rest of the euro is, you know, less so. But we have to compete in world markets and therefore, you know, supplies of um, liquefied gas, that is, the price of that is going up. There's nuclear um, ongoing repairs to the French capacity. Norway is actually repairing its facilities as well. So we're all competing in a worldwide market. Supply has fallen, so price is going to go up. So I don't see that this problem is going to disappear in the near future. There is no indication that uh, President Zelensky is going to be thinking about talking to the Russians about a peace deal. So I don't think we can see the end of this war for possibly another year, if not more. Yeah, extremely worrying times ahead. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Hilary. That's Hilary Ingham, uh, economist at Lancaster University. Thank you.